Hi all, Andy here. Happy Thursday, live office hours, helping you build a career you love because that's what I do. Not just on Thursdays or Tuesdays, every day of the week, every damn day of the week. I'm here for you. So I know some of you are here with me today. Get in, say hi, uh, let me know where you're from. Let me know what you do, what you need. Put some question marks in front of your questions. I'm gonna give a quick hello to the chat and then I'm diving right into your questions because today I just brought my smile, my brain, and a bunch of announcements and goodies for you of what's going on around the Mile Walk Academy over the next seven weeks. So, Adam Stark, great to see you from the UK, the other side of the pond as I like to call it. Charlene Crocker, Pank Podcast. Gilles, what's up? My boot camper and baby girl, my leader, Cherry, what's happening? Nicole, how are you? Beth, you know I always love to see you. Hope you're doing great. Pamela, Julie, Jean, fan of Andy. I love that handle. Nancy, D. Roberts, and everybody else. Great to have you. So I am, uh, it's, a, it's an AMA today. Ask me anything. I'm going to go right down the chat, but make sure you put some question marks in front of your questions. And, uh, you know, as, as, as the people start to settle in uh, for the stuff, I'll, I'll give you some announcements. I got some really great things a ton of free coaching, some really awesome premium coaching too. So I love to see you. Let's do it. Uh, Adam, hey, Charlene, looking for some positivity and inspiration from you today. I've got it because I just don't know any other way to be. I feel a layoff coming in my workplace. Oh no, kind of scared. Well, we'll get you. We'll get you in order. Pank, what's up, Gilles? Lots of luck on the interview, final interview, scheduled Monday. Great to, great, uh, great to hear. Lots of luck. I'm pulling for you. Karen, Stacy are pulling for you. All the boot campers are pulling for you. I know you got this. All right, let's see. I got something here from Adam Stark. Says, I, plan, I planned films and events with old school methods. Notepads, calls, emails, Word. Those are always good. Uh, don't have event project scheduling software experience. Some job ads mention needing it, how to overcome. So one of the things that I would do, this is a very good question because anytime you, you, are, you are either coming out of school and you don't quite have the experience or you're, you're transitioning from the old school methods to the new school methods like Adam is or, or you've used different software packages than the one the company who's hiring happens to use. I generally think this is not always, not always, generally, one of the more easy uh, objections to overcome because a lot of these a lot of these products and tools have free education, educational videos. Uh, if it's something that is prominent in your industry, uh, it is worth it to pursue some type of certification or training. If, by the way, I don't, number one, I don't want you to, because I know some of you follow me, you watch all the minutes, all my videos, and you listen to what I say. And oftentimes I will tell you, I don't want you to rush out and go and get an MBA or a master's degree or pay a lot of money for certifications because you think it's going to help you credential up. However, I am a fan of it. If you're locked into your career, meaning I'm focused, I want to make a go of this, I'm thinking long term, and knowing these software products or this particular product or anything like it is going to benefit me long term, if that's the case, then I would I would seek those kind of of, of training opportunities and certifications and things of that nature. But when you get into the interview, if you're taking the training, you mention it. If you uh, have not uh, taken the training, I would strongly suggest familiarizing yourself with the nomenclature and the processes so that you can explain how what you know and what you've done would be easily adaptable where you'd be able to get up to speed quickly. There wouldn't be much of a learning curve on the software because effectively the software is just streamlining already what you do. So I'm all about that. Again, uh, I don't have the book. Uh, let me see if I got a copy. I do. One of these guys in interview intervention, page 58, question number 10 on my silver bullet interview questions. That's how you also want to answer that. Adam, I know you got a copy. And if anybody doesn't have a copy, we are still running a $7 book package for this $30 hardbound, which I will send to you anywhere in the world. 
Uh, I, I give you an ebook for free. That's nine dollars on Amazon or Nook or Barnes and Noble or wherever, and an audio book you can't get anywhere else, and some other bonus books. It's a steal of a deal. Maybe Kara can drop that in the chat. Kara, sorry about that. I think I told you I was going to talk about the resume first, but since Adam asked that question, I think that's probably more appropriate. So I hope that hope that helps my friend. And she already dropped it. All right. Baby girl, what's up? I love my Canadian people, my friends. Nicole Maharaj, have an interview tomorrow. Lots of luck to you. Have been reviewing some of your videos on introducing yourself, building rapport, acing the interview, and salary negotiation. Sounds like you're all set. Lots of luck to you. Hey, Beth. Pamela Moore, my boot camper, how are you? Julie Anderson, hey to you. Yes, you are a returning boot camper. Gene, that my Gene R. You know, I love you, Gene R. Great to see you. Fan of Andy, Nancy, D. Roberts, Atmanir Bar. I'm not sure if I sounded that, uh, spell or uh, said that correctly, but hey to you from India. Ryan. Buenos Dias to you, too, from Colorado. Neil, Janine, Neil, Danielle, Abella, how are you? Signing a new job offer right now. Can we give Daniela, I'm, I don't know if that's Daniela, I'm assuming that's Daniela Bella with the XO, a big high 10. Great, great to have you out. Congratulations. I love that. I always love to hear your successes. That's why I do what I do. Jana from Florida, what's up? Evan Hughes. Ian, how are you? Let's see. We're dog. Where's the Kristen Minch? What's up? Julie Anderson's got a question. What are your thoughts on increasing LinkedIn presence to gain visibility and build network to help identify job opportunities? Suggestions on topics to post about. I love this. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are uh, many techniques to increase your presence on LinkedIn. I have a video uh, on, my, on my YouTube channel about how to get noticed on LinkedIn. And I talk about the static setup, which is your profile, right? You set your profile up once. And then the dynamic nature of LinkedIn, which is really what helps you get discovered. And the dynamic nature is about posting, circulating, perhaps writing short -term articles and long form articles. I have a news, I have a newsletter on LinkedIn. If you are not, maybe team, maybe we could drop uh, the newsletter, my LinkedIn newsletter link, and and Julie and everybody else in the community can take a look at that. And Julie, you can use this platform. And so what happens is uh, every couple, you know, every couple days I put out a, every couple days I put out a new newsletter on LinkedIn. I uh, today one went out about collaboration. It was a written article. Uh, the other day I put something out uh, where I had a video. Other days I put uh, articles out where I'm I'm linking you out to podcasts. Now this is my platform. However. For you, if you want to start establishing credibility as a subject matter expert in a particular field, then what kind of articles you should write about, I would suggest relating them to what it is that you do, right? I write about career development and building skills and job searching and things of that nature What based on whatever your profession is. If you're an accountant, a marketer, a seller of particular things, widgets, services, a particular industry you support or a particular solution line, maybe you have customer-centric solutions, CRM systems, maybe you're more into Salesforce, maybe you're into other things, write about what you want to be known for based on where you want to go. And if you're a career changer and you don't have a ton of experience, write opinion pieces, write thoughts. You can do some research and share what you know as a way of starting a conversation. So answer to your question on my thoughts are, hell yes, do it. Uh, the second thing is, what type of things should I write about? Where do you want to go from a branding standpoint and where you want to go from a career standpoint? I would write about that. 
And then the types of articles that I would write about are how-to pieces, uh, current event pieces, opinion pieces, any of that is, is cool. And then I would be circulating it on my, uh, on my platform and you can write it in a short form where it's just a simple post that's gonna fly on by, or you can write it as a newsletter article, which is something that will, will stay intact. And so every time I write a newsletter, digest it just pops it on the top of the the newsletter and then there's all the previous newsletters that are there so uh so i i love it and i would check out my video on how to get noticed on linkedin i believe that's the title of it it's on my youtube channel so check it out and and you I are a boot camper and i have a more in-depth uh demo and all that other good stuff uh in the in the boot camp program all right what do we got here All right. Hello, Susan Harley and Deb. Deb, thank you for the card that we got the other day um, with your sympathies. I really appreciated it. I, I certainly showed it to Linda. And thank you for that and having her mom in your thoughts. All right. Evan, what's up, my good looking friend? Interviewed with all the stakeholders. It's been great. Did a third meet with the hiring manager. Thought I would get an offer. Instead, I would for, in, instead I was informed it's between me and another candidate. Next steps. So, okay. So first thing is before I answer what your next steps are, I want to take you through the Andy time machine, and we're gonna go back. We're gonna go back to the beginning. And one of the things I always want you to do is communicate with them what you have going, even if you don't have anything else going. If you have other job uh, interviews going, you let them know. And in turn, you get from them, what's the landscape look like? Are you interviewing other candidates? I just want to know where I stand or what the landscape looks like. Any internal candidates, any external candidates, so on and so forth. And as you go through the process, you should continue to ask, what's it look like? They will tell you. This is not a big deal. It's not, it's not difficult to believe that there would be nobody or else or that there would be five other people. It is what it is. And, and you're all big boys and girls. You can take it. And most companies, 90 some odd percent of them will just give you that information. So I always want you to ask. You should never be surprised in a process. If you're surprised, it's usually a result of you not asking, not them not telling. Now, they may not de declare this information unless you solicit it. But most of the time, they'll let you know. Now, okay, all that, what's done is done. You're here. They inform you it's between you and another candidate. You wait it out. Okay, let me know, what, you know when you'll decide, and I want you to know I'm interested. If you want to drop some handwritten thank you cards, if that's something that you can do, or you know where their, you know their address is, or you know where their office is, or whatever it is, I would probably do something like that. But other than that, I would... I would wait it out. I really would. I mean, honestly, the best, you know, the best defense is a great offense. I'm all of, always about feeding the funnel, right? And I hope you know that expression from me, right? I would be sending out my resume a la my job search challenge techniques every single day until I inked my deal. I would never quit until until I was signed. I, I probably would even keep going then uh, until I was sitting in the chair on day one. But that's how I think about that. And um, you know, I hope that helps, but there's not, not a ton that you need to do at this point. Fran, I've already finished reading. Awesome, I'm from Brazil and got it on Amazon. I thank you for the support on Amazon. If you'd like some extra goodies and this particular version of the book, which is not on Amazon, it's packaged differently. It's with the original cover if you got the hardbound or a lot of you probably get the paperback. Um, but this is, this is um, um, a, a newer a newer edition with, with what we call the trade dressing. So the cover. Uh, Adam Stark, quick follow-up. My only issue with learning some software beforehand is that it seems every company uses different software. Then don't worry about it. Go in, page 58, question 10. Susan Harley, signing up for the resume writing course. Excellent. Okay, so Susan Harvey, thanks for serving that up. If y'all didn't know this, I have a $297 resume course that's actually going to become $497 at the end of the year. But, but as I sit here and I talk right now, it's $79. And on Tuesday, Tuesday next week, here's announcement number one. 
It's $79. You get everything you need. The, the resume will practically write itself. You have all the books, all the booklets, the, the structure, the samples, the editable template with all the instructions in it that you type over. It's awesome. And it's, it's a number of, of instruction sessions for that teach you about how to think about the resume, how to write the career profile, the highlights, the professional experience, and the rest of it. There are Q&As in there with over 200 answers to various resume questions. There's a video in there, an extra bonus video on exceptions and things that are weird that a lot of you have that I've already answered and show you how to do. Like, I'm a contractor. I'm a stay-at-home parent returning. I'm, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I'm whatever. Boom. It's all in there. It's uh, it's four hundred dollars. Or sorry, four, it'll be four hundred ninety-seven. It's two hundred ninety-seven normally. We're raising the price, but I wanna I wanna uh, have a special here, and it all next week it's on special. But it's only seventy-nine dollars up until Tuesday, and then on Wednesday the price goes up to one hundred nineteen dollars, and on Thursday it's one hundred forty-nine dollars. But on Tuesday I'm unlocking the first version. Uh, sorry, the first session of the program, which is the insider's view. And what we're going to do is we're going to meet on Tuesday at 11 central time here. Uh, we're going to run through it. It's an hour and five minutes of teaching. And then I'm going to do a Q&A. And then on Thursday, we're going to come back and I'm going to do a resume Q&A with you. So if you want to get the program now, it's 79 bucks. You can get the program, get in, go through it, write your resume, and then come on Tuesday and Thursday and ask me your questions. So that's 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 announcement number number one. All right, let's see. Where do we go from there? So Susan Harley, welcome to you into the program. Karen M. Hi from Boston. How are you? Executive assistant for 20 years. Last job was product manager, one and a half years. Have taken time off after accepting a buyout. Okay, how to explain gap? Of employment which was partly due to depression I would not say that at all I'm sorry that you went through that that's not something you need to share that's all that's all I mean by that uh, what I would say is all right I I took some time off because I accepted a buyout I'm now ready to get back to work you don't have to say anything and and the fact that you've been working for 20 years perhaps you've never had a chance to take some time off for yourself I don't know if you're single or you have family or kids or whatever doesn't make any difference you can you can say I took some time off to spend some time for me for my family for my whatever uh, I don't know that all, any of you know this but in 2003 um, that entire year, I decided to take the year off, and then I went back to work in 2004. I actually shared some of that story with you in in a live office hours I did a few weeks back about uh, my personal job search case study the last time I found a corporate job, and I I take you through that. And Karen, that might be something you want to check out, but I had a, I had a I had a gap year in there too, so to speak. And you just, that's all you need to do. And in your, in your resume, speaking of resume writing, uh, if you go to the Andy School of Resume Writing, you know that I recommend a two-paragraph career profile. In the career profile, in the second paragraph, you, you list your core competencies, which is, really, which is really nothing more than the particular business functions that you're familiar with or that you know. And then I also recommend that if you have any exceptions that are noteworthy, you know, I got, I got my, M, you know, well-educated with MBA from Harvard. Uh, in your case, it could be uh, returning uh, to work after year off for family time. I mean, it could just be something like that. That's it. And then there's not really a whole lot of explaining you need to do. I, I was an EA, EA for 20 years or I was a what you know, administrative assistant or whatever you want to call yourself. And then I decided to take a year off or so. I was given a buyout and now I'm going back to work. That's it. You don't need to explain any more than that. All right. Uh, Kara is asking me, uh, I am a, oh, Janet Tan, I'm a boot camper, and is this resume writing program different than what is already in the boot camp program? If yes, I want to buy it. Okay, so if you are in my job search coaching program, which I endearingly call the boot camp because it used to be called the job search boot camp, it's a little history there, uh, you have access to all of my job search curriculum stuff. So meaning 
you have a main boot camp program and inside or in addition to one or the other, depending on how I packaged it, you have the resume writing workshop. In the resume writing workshops case, those videos are embodied in the main boot camp program. It's the same teaching. I um, mean, it's a it's a bonus. It's 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 a deeper dive into resume writing that you have in that product. There are other things boot campers have, like the mini camps, like the job search challenge product, like the interview collection of courses, or something like that. All of that stuff is always available to anybody who's in my premium job search program. I don't make you pay extra for that. I don't want you to have to pay twice for the same type of instruction. So, so you, you have all that. And um, what, what I'll be showing on Tuesday, that insider's view, Janet, you already can go and watch that if you'd like. It's in, it's in the boot camp product and it's called the insider's view. It's the first video. So I hope that clarifies. And by the way, if you are in my job search coaching program, we're going to be sending you a message tomorrow and I lay out the next seven weeks, literally like the next seven weeks with all the dates and locations of all the live coaching and you will all get that. And there's, there's um, maybe it's worth making a quick little announcement about what's coming because this is pretty, this is pretty special stuff. So next week, I already mentioned I'm going to be covering resume writing on Tuesday and Thursday live. That's on my YouTube channel. The Tuesday session comes down after we do it. So I don't leave that up. I'll leave it up till Thursday. And after the Thursday session and at midnight on my time on Thursday when all the resume special goes away, we'll take that down. The following, um, the following week, I'm here for live office hours on Thursday, October 27th. The following week... October 31st through November 4th, every day at 11 o'clock on my YouTube channel, every day, I'm doing a new job search challenge. New teaching, new stuff, slides, books, the whole nine yards, that entire week. It's free for all of you to show up. Kara, maybe we can drop that. I would highly recommend highly recommend registering for that we got workbooks we got other stuff that you're going to want you're going to want to have and you're going to ask me well is it the same as the old job search challenge conceptually it is but i'm teaching all new stuff more in depth i'm fancier now i got more stuff i got more evidence i got more tricks and and all that's going into what i'm calling the 2023 version because it's really 2022 and 2023 because i want you jab search challenge in all the time but i especially want you jab search challenge in between november and february it's the peak hiring season now the people that attend that uh if you're in my boot camp you're going to get the new product if you already own the jab search challenge you're going to get this new product gratis it's free uh, if you're in my public community and you don't own any of that stuff, you're welcome to attend free, but the replays are not free. And I'm not leaving it on my YouTube channel. That's October 31st through November 4th. It's going to be awesome. I mean, really good. I got new teaching. I got case studies. We're going to be doing Q&A every day. And then, as if that's not good enough, starting November 8th and running through November 8th, 10th, 15th, 17th, and 22nd. I'm doing a brand new interview intervention, 10th anniversary edition training course. And everybody that's in my job search coaching program is invited to come to that. We're going to do it all live. It's mega teaching. It's long. It's full. It's everything you could possibly imagine related to interviewing. And I need to do it over five days. So it's a lot of teaching. It's, it's everything. It's start here, A to Z. And, uh, and, that's, and that's going to be, we're doing a promotion. So anybody who's in the job search coaching program will be able to come to all of that. That is a ton of coaching with me. And those are private sessions and we'll do them on Zoom. So that's what, the, that's what the calendar looks like. And if you're in my boot camp already, tomorrow you're going to get an email with all this broken down. It's, I'm going to tell you not to buy anything. I'm going to tell you where to go, where, when to go, what you got, and all that stuff. So, uh, so, so I just I want, you to, I want you to know that. Now, uh, much like I said, anybody who's in my, my big boot camp, 
is has access to all these other products that I have related to job searching. That's true. So if you decide to buy the $79 resume workshop at this rate, or you pay 119 or 149 or whenever you get into it, or 297, you can upgrade to the job search coaching program and we just have you pay the difference. So you email us at support at milewalk.com and then we say, oh, you paid $79 already. Okay, we're gonna take that off and here's a coupon and then just pay this less the 79 and then you can have the full premium product kind of thing. So it's it's pretty good. So if you're new to Andy Land and you just wanna dip your toe, the $79 is, it's, ridic- it's a ridiculous price for what you're gonna get and it's a great way to just kind of get acclimated to my teaching. And if you have any questions, you know me. I'm happy to answer them. All right, so so thank you for that, Karen, and teeing it up, and for Janet for um, for asking about that. Janine, what's up? How likely is it that recruiters slash hiring managers share their agency benefits manual at the end of an interview with a prospective candidate? So, couple things. There's multiple ways to do this, and here's why you would want to do it this way. If you got a job offer, that's at the end, they say, hey, Janine, here you go. We're going to give you a job offer, or we're going to send you the benefits. Or they might say, hey, Janine, we're putting the paperwork together. We're going to send you the benefits anyway. It's a standard brochure. It's a standard packet. It's standard sheets, spreadsheets, Word, whatever it is. They send it. That could just be educating you to let you know what that is. If, if they give it to you early in the process, okay, if they give it to you early in the process, meaning you've had a screen with the recruiter or perhaps you've had an interview with the hiring official and they send you their benefits packet, what they're trying to do is they're trying to brag about their benefits and what they have and they're trying to plant the seed for you that you get so excited that you're willing to take less money. I, this is what, this, this is the only reason to do that. Okay, because there's no reason I need to share all that with you until we get down to the end. So uh, I know companies do that sometimes because they're so proud of it. Uh, Hey, you don't have to pay for anything. Hey, the premiums are super low. Hey, the reimbursement is really high. Hey, we love want you to know we do all this. And what they're doing is they're planting in your mind how great that is, thinking that you'll fall in love with that and be willing to take less money at the end. That's the trick. And so you're asking about how likely it is. Uh, It isn't about probability and odds in this case. It's about what their tactics are and what their intent is. Uh, Mathira, how are you from Sweden? Anna Resendez, what's up? What's wash hands? Are are you guys guys talking because I have blood on my hands? Well, I got blood on my hands because when I picked up my interview book to show Adam, I slit my finger. That's silly. It's the first time it's ever happened. Do you know that I always have one of these? It's just a paper towel with me, little Andy tricks, because I'm deathly afraid that I'm going to spill my water or my coffee or my whatever uh, during a show, and then I won't have any. <laughs> I fight my desk with. All right. Leah from Frankfurt, what's up? Janine again, and Harley says hello. Uh, Second interview next week, first round with VPs and hiring managers, second round colleagues, how do I prepare? Uh, With your colleagues, you prepare the same way that you would prepare for any other interview. The one thing you want to stress with the colleagues is that you want to make sure that you recognize that you need to connect with them as you would a staff member that you might be managing or a, uh, or your boss or supervisors or whoever it might be that you're gonna be, that you're gonna be uh, working with. And with your colleagues, it depends what kind of colleague they are. If it's a team member or is it a customer you might be supporting or another group you might be interacting with, in any case, you want to you want to get from them. How is it that you can best support them? Is there something I know that I can teach you? Is there something I can do to make your life easier? And you want to get at that. So in some way, shape, or form, you need to elicit that. You can probably prep for that in advance by doing some research. 
as to how you'll be working together or who they are, if you have their names or you have their titles. Uh, but that's, that's, I would definitely be up on that for sure. Zumba with Mr. Purple. What's up from Texas? Neil, I'm a resume writer. Your content has really strengthened my work. I, I glad to hear that. Been following your videos for a year. Love the expertise. You are welcome. I, I, Neil, I appreciate that. I do get, uh, and I, it, it does make me happy. Uh, I, I don't mean this in a bad way. I mean it in a great way. I get a lot of questions, calls, emails, texts from other career coaches, um, you know, that follow, follow my stuff. So I, 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 in addition to helping you, I want to be the coach of coach for coaches too. So I, I appreciate that. D Apple Darlene, what's up from Michigan? Looking for a job now for months, just getting automated declines. Your advice helped my fiance get his CEO position, so I'm hoping I can learn from you too. Darlene, you are welcome. Tell your fiance, you said, right? Your fiance, uh, congratulations for me. Darlene, five straight days of job searching. Remember, automated declines putting your resume into what I call an applicant trashing system, what the rest of the world calls an applicant tracking system, is not job searching. That's applying for jobs. And it's no surprise that you get a lot of declines. I'm going to teach you why you need to bypass that, how exactly to bypass that, how to get in motion, how to control the controllables, how to make sure that you are getting better results. So I'm, I'm looking forward to supporting you. Megan Wisdom, hey, and Janet, great to see you too. And Janet's got a different question. I'm, yes, you are a boot camper. So I've been approached by a lot of recruiters on jobs that are much lower than what I'm making currently. How can I prevent this? Is it my LinkedIn profile? Janet, with your wonderful picture there, I want you to, I want to suggest that you think about this differently. You don't want to prevent any recruiter from contacting you about anything. I don't care if I get an email and I'm a vice president of analytics and I'm getting an email from a recruiter for an analytical analyst position, I don't care. I'm on the phone with them immediately, right? Hey, be happy to talk. If that role's not for me, I'll be happy to network with you. I'd love to get to know you, your company, your whatever, whether it's a corporate recruiter, an executive, it makes no difference. You get on the phone with them and you explain to them who you are and then you help them fulfill their position or refer them or whatever. And if it's a corporate recruiter, you get on the phone with them and you say, okay, here's me. I'm a senior vice president or whatever, right? And I, I recognize you You mentioned that, you know, the impetus to reach out with, to me was for this little junior position here, but I thought it would be worth us connecting and getting to know each other. And you might have some other positions in your company, or if not, then I can help you with people I know that are in the junior ranks. That's it. You never want to, never stop that, ever. 100%. You should have a 100% response rate back. Doesn't matter who they are. And is it my LinkedIn profile? No. If your LinkedIn profile is designed properly, it's lack of careful thought and research on the recruiter's part. Do you, do you all know, I have, I have been tempted to show you all the inside of my LinkedIn direct messages. And I get no less than 10 a day from people who want to know if I'm interested in being a recruiter for their company, if I'm interested in owning a franchise business, if I'm interested, I mean, like I get all kinds of nonsense, okay? And sometimes when I'm in a cheeky mood, I reply to them and I say, oh, I, I, I see you spent a lot of time looking at my, my background. Right, like this is not, well, this is different for me. I'm running a business. I'm on my path. Nothing's taken me off. But for you, where you're looking for the art of the possible and you're looking to strengthen and build relationships with people in the market, it's good to be talking to recruiters, even though they might not have reached out to you about a position that exactly fits you. But for other people who are reaching out to me who are not spending any time looking at my background, what's happening is if I, if I respond that way to them, then they respond back to either they don't respond or they say, oh, I'm so sorry, it was an automated system, blah, blah, blah. 
or my researcher sent that and I didn't realize. Okay, so that's what's happening to you. Is somebody who's, you know, you've got some word in your, you know, in your profile and they're clicking a box and hitting a button. Click, jam, boom, go. Automated message. So, so, so don't, don't sweat that. Uh, let's see. D. Apple, I live overseas, but my address is in America. I think it scares employer. Any advice? Put your address of where you will be moving to. If you are conditionally moving, that's okay, provided you will eventually go there. Meaning, I live in the UK, let's say, and then you want to get a job in the US and California. You can put California slash UK if you want. You could put California in there. You could in your cover letter say, I'm in the UK and I'm moving to California. I'm moving to California for family reasons. I'm moving to, or whatever it is. And I, I don't know that that's the issue, uh, but it's certainly something to think about. Uh, Anar, let's see. I don't know if that's a question. Struggling with work politics, I'm a woman in my late 40s with 25 years of work experience and have been with current company for six months and other team members are women in their 20s. That is cultural related. So uh, I don't know, I don't, I'm just assuming that if you're on a team with people that are from a personality standpoint, uh, it doesn't really jive with you, that's more cultural than anything. And I, I'm, I'm guessing that that's probably the issue. And there's a number of different ways to handle it. But one thing that I would say is you're going to have to deal directly with them and address the issue head on, as well as talk to any of your superiors or whatever to help them foster the right kind of relationships. But typically, typically, if you can't handle it in at the ranks level, it doesn't get handled. Because when supervisors are trying to explain to everybody you need to play nice in the playground, that doesn't usually work. So I know that's not a great, um, a great response, but I would be very thoughtful about if you decide to leave, that you're making sure that you're joining the com a company with the right kind of, 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 of individuals that, that you're going to get along with. Uh, let's see. I did that, Kara. Thank you. And then, all right, I'm not. I'm, I'm a little confused there. Uh, Word Dog Toronto. My last job was great. Uh, however, my job title was custom made, and it was a new role, and it was created for me. How to reframe this generic? What to look for to pull? from my job. I don't know what your title was and I don't know what you're looking for, so I can't give you an answer. What I will tell you is you can genericize it if you need to. And if you want to be really safe, and this is over the top safe, like you, I don't even know that I would do this, you could give it a generic title and then say known internally as whatever that goofy title was in your t on the description underneath your title. Ian, Highway 99, getting directed. Love to hear it. Letitia, go get anything Andy is offering and sharing. It's so much worth it. Letitia, thank you so much. And I love that you're saying that because I know you're in a lot of my programs, in my leadership program and in the job search coaching program. So you've got most things, Andy, for sure. Maggie. What about LinkedIn? How far back should we list past employment? I love the question. So you might hear me say this. You might heard me say this before, Maggie. The resume is a marketing document, not a work history document. LinkedIn to me is the same thing. And so what you could do is you, could, you need to think about multiple things on LinkedIn because you also need to think of the usage of LinkedIn. If your goal on LinkedIn is to make sure that you either get discovered or get reconnected with old colleagues, or right, or want to want to, people to know, I also worked at that company many years ago. And while I might not advertise it on my resume, I might want to have it on LinkedIn because I want I want people from that company who are alumni to connect with me or 
perhaps it's just a great company and there's a lot of good people that work there or it might come up in searches, who knows? So you need to think about what is it that you want out of LinkedIn. So I, I like to keep my companies, I like to keep everything on there because a lot of people will reach out to me and, and notice that I, I used to work for this company way back when or that company way back when. And so it's entirely up to you. What, what Either what you think sells you best, if that's your primary goal of LinkedIn, or what's going to help me grow my network the most. Those are different goals, except that by growing your network, that in turn can lead to something that is... Um, that, that is uh, that is a you know positive. It's a new job, so you got to think about it that way. Gene, yes, it is Gene Rebel. As a consultant, would the resume writing workshop be beneficial to me? Thanks. Uh, I or should I use the dollars to schedule a one-to-one instead? So if 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 I'm because I know you, and because I so 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 hold on. Let me let me let me be really clear here. Gene is asking me a question about Gene. If Gene was asking me a question about can consultants use the resume writing workshop, the answer is a resounding yes. So we have a lot of people who are independent consultants that are that are going out and trying to get program management roles, product management roles, accounting roles, general project manager, whatever it might be, okay, creative designer roles. And the resume writing workshop does work for them, and I even have a section in the resume writing workshop for how I would lay out my consulting experience and all that good stuff. That's for anybody. For Gene Rebel, uh, if I'm you, I would be more inclined to spend that money on time with me because of the goals you have related to your business and the way you market your business and how you want to get clients is different. Because a lot of consultants, what they're doing is they're looking for full-time serial gigs, meaning I want to get hired, I want to work at this job. When this job is over, I either want to turn it into another job with that same company, client, or I want to do the same kind of thing with another client. You are building, if I understand correctly, a business where you could have multiple clients, where you're trying to sell your services. You need more marketing material around selling your services rather than a resume. You do not need a resume if you're building the business the way we talked about. So it's not like when I, you know, as a recruiter, when I was selling executive search services, I didn't hand somebody a resume, right? I talked them through my business, what we do, how we do it, and how it's going to benefit them. So that's that's what I think there. So everybody, be clear. I'm answering Gene because of what Gene does and what she's trying to build. If you are a consultant that is a freelancer or you know, you're looking for consulting opportunities like you would a full-time employment opportunity, except that you're a 1099 or a temporary employee, the resume writing workshop, that that works for you. So I hope that helped. You're welcome, Kristen. Jana. Uh, recruiter reached out via LinkedIn, said thought I was a good fit for X position, hybrid near me. Uh, did I have 10 minutes to talk before 5 p.m. same day? I said yes, we set up a call. Then he asked if I could send my resume. Newly created per Andy's instruction, I sent resume during the call. He gave a different title. For the position he gave in LinkedIn message, but I was interested in, wait, for the position he gave in the LinkedIn message, but I was interested in pursuing after general chit chat, he uh, asked how soon I'd be available. How long does this go? Um, He asked how soon I'd be available to interview for the position. We worked that out. He said he'd send me a full description, go into further communication crickets, never received. Any advice on how to handle avoid this? Okay, there's multiple issues here. Uh, First thing is, for any of you, if a recruiter contacts you, if a recruiter actually calls you and you are not fully waiting for the call, you get off the phone as fast as humanly possible. The longer you're on the call, the worse it is. It is. You want to get off that call and you want to you want to make sure you know who that is, why they're calling, when you might have sent a note, a resume, a message, or whatever, and you better be ready because 
you, I mean, it's true. You only get one chance to make a first impression. That's if they call you because you were applying or whatever and they didn't email, but they actually just called you because some do that. If they reach out to you and want to talk right away, you need to make crystal clear and be absolutely certain you know why they're calling, where they're calling from, meaning what company and all that good stuff, because you do not want to be flat-footed when you talk to them initially. And you need to be ready to know what to give them, what kind of what the resume should look like, what messaging for them, how to make sure you're saying stuff that isn't killing the opportunity. And so that's going to take you some time to get ready. So I wouldn't I wouldn't have tried to do all that on the fly or very quickly. That's the second thing. The third thing is when you started talking and and either they had the position that they reached out to you for or they introduced a new one, that's now even worse because now you have even less information about this. You need to be really careful about what you say because you could, like I said, be saying something where the recruiter is getting the sense that this position isn't for you or you're not interested in the position or you have some condition that's going to prevent you from doing well, in, meaning meaning I don't want to travel or I don't want to this or I don't want to that, when you don't know uh, all that much about the position. Why they didn't call you back, I have no idea. Uh, every recruiter is different. You might have said something where they decided, okay, that's just not the right fit or the right person. Uh, I, I have no idea about that. But you just you need to be careful about about how ready you are, what you're ready for, and have plans and backup plans. If if they ask this, then I do that. If they ask this, then I do that. It's really really important that you're prepared, even for screening calls. So so I don't I don't know I don't know why. Uh, I, I don't know why they're not calling you back, but I can only speculate. Dan, have interview uh, have interview intervention watched hours of your videos, attended your free boot camps. I'm assuming you mean the mini camp. Rewrote everything and LinkedIn based on your counsel, but still only two interviews. I don't know what to tell you. I, I there could be any one of a zillion things wrong uh, with that. Are you targeting the right places? How does your resume look? What's your messaging in your in your reach outs? Uh, I, I, I mean, there's there's I don't there's a million things that can be wrong. Interested in your answer to Gene? Okay, Donna, a reference. My manager at, at a previous company informed me he's currently working with the company I'm interviewing with. Should I mention this to HR rep that I've met with? I would make sure if I know anybody at that company that I talk to that person and I make sure I hear from that person first live, not via email, that I love this company. I don't love this company. Hey, I know so-and-so. Hey, say this. Hey, don't say that. Right? I, I, I would not just mention to an HR person that you know somebody what happens if that HR person doesn't like that person. Right? Like I, I just am really careful about this. Fan of Andy, how should I best market myself if I have worked in different industries and roles? I have the accumulated years of experience, but limited years and success stories in each. Okay, so a couple things. Uh, First thing is, there is no shortage. There's an endless number of ways to package your experience. So I'm always going to go back to what markets you best for where you want to go. Let me just let me just give you fan of Andy examples to to kind of simulate this, maybe to stimulate your thinking. Let's say I worked in three industries. I worked in healthcare, financial services and manufacturing and I had 3 years in each, okay? And I was a project manager in each, PM, 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 across three different industries. What what markets you best? If you're looking for a PM role, you have nine years of project management experience across various industries. That's it. That markets you best. Nine years, PM. If you are targeting a healthcare company and you want to set up your profile, your intro, or whatever... I'm, I have nine years of project management experience, three years specifically with healthcare companies. That markets you best, 
right? So like you, you, the way you package what you're doing, let's say you got 20 years of experience, 10 in financial services, 10 in healthcare, you got various positions that you've held, you're trying to break, you did healthcare the first 10 years, financial services the second 10 years, and you wanna go back to healthcare. 20 years of experience, 10 of which is in healthcare. Right, like you, 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 you have to spin the words based on how you wanna market you. So without knowing what the, I mean, and you could have various roles. You could have been a developer, a business analyst, and a project manager. Those are three different roles, all in the same line where you're increasing your responsibilities. So that's what you, that's what you're doing. That's how you're doing it. Wait, let me see. I think this is a question. Uh, Chris Downden, I worked in a number of roles. Hey, is this, this is not, this is different, right? Than fan of Andy. Okay. I worked in different roles that have been responsible for client relationship, post sales in SaaS orgs. I love it. Okay. My title varies depending on the industry. It's irrelevant. Meaning for your marketing purposes, even though your title changed, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much. Client relationship manager, account manager, customer success, they're all the same. How would you market yourself in order to bring awareness to the different titles? You don't want to bring awareness to the different titles. You want to tout your customer relationship skills and account management skills or implementation skills or whatever it is that you are responsible for. So if you're in a SaaS organization and somebody sells the software and your job is to then manage the account so that everything is implemented properly and they have what they need, you're upselling them new licensees or new functional pieces to the packet or whatever it is, you talk about X years of experience doing customer management or, or account management or whatever su customer success, whatever you wanna call it, whatever you wanna call it, you group it together. The gold is in the depth of what you do as it relates to servicing a customer. It is not that you've held different titles that all generally do the same thing or have the same suite of skills and responsibilities that are required to make them successful. That's if I understand you correctly. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want you to do that. It, and, and by the way, it, one company's customer success manager is another company's account manager, is another company's client executive, is another company's client director. They, they all call them different things, but they generally do the same thing. e &M, is there a tactical way to steer a pro prospective employer in the final stages of offering you a position away from checking most recent employer references from any past employment? So uh, let me, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're currently working there at your most recent employer, but if you're working at your most recent employer and you are not unemployed, there is absolutely no reason for a prospective employer to be calling into that company and asking for references there. To verify employment is one thing. Uh, you know, does Ian work here or did, he, then, then we get into the did Ian work there. If you are no longer working there and you are, are, you are being asked to give a reference to, uh, from your most recent employer, then you can simply say, you know, based on what you're looking to know or what I'm doing or this or that, you know, I, I have other references that I think would be better for you to call that would be able to speak to the areas that you are most interested in understanding about me. And though, though your choice of references should be up to you, not, not them. That's, that's not customary. They should not be forcing you to give them who they want to talk to in those cases. So I would just push them away from it. All right. Word Dog Toronto. I've missed, okay, so, so in reference to Janet Tan's question, I've missed, I've, I've, I've lots of missed opportunities with recruiters as I found them annoying. Is there a way to recover? Do they take notes uh, that live on my profile, boot camper? Okay, so with recruiters, 
I, okay, in general, in life, whenever you're interacting with somebody, your, your outlook, if I can suggest that you try this, because I think this will give you better results. If you're going to take the time to talk to the recruiter, before you go into that discussion, you realize that recruiter is reaching out to you for that recruiter's self-interest, okay? Why would you think otherwise? They have something they need to fulfill. It's either in their company or for their client's company. That's it. That's all they do. That's all they do. That's their entire purpose in life. So when you get to them, you need to be thinking about, okay, this is going to go one of a couple ways. Either, you know, by the grace of God, it's a bullseye and today's my lucky day because they have my dream job and I'm all for it, right? That's rare. Second thing is they might have something. I might not be sure if I'm interested. So I'm going to be as open-minded as, as I can and I'm going to hear them out and I'm going to think about what the possibilities are. And if it's not exactly what I expect or hoped for, is it close enough that I should have the discussion or further discussions to see if I, it's malleable enough that I could get it to look like something I would love or if that's the right next step for me or that's a better step than where I am at the moment? If none of those are, are possible, then is there a way I can help this person? Irrespective of how annoying, brash, idiotic, or whatever they are, why not leave goodwill? Why not help them fulfill their position with people you know? It doesn't matter if they're likable or not, right? They're a means to an end to you, right? And there's nothing wrong with sending out goodwill in the world. So that's, I mean, when you go into a discussion, there's all finite number of things that can happen, but all of them could, in, could contain you giving them something positive, because if I call a recruiter back and I'm not the right fit and I give that recruiter some names or some guidance or some insight or, or help, hey, you should go check that company out. I hear they got a lot of great people and they're letting people go. Hey, I got a friend that's in that. You should call him. What do you care? Get, get, give them the gifts. Your, your friends are big boys and girls. They can call them back or not if they want. But that recruiter will always rem remember that you help them and they make notes. They make notes, and if they're talking to you and they're in a corporation, there's some file there with your name on it that says you sent them an email or you went through their applicant tracking system, and there's a notes field, and there's all kinds of other stuff that they're filling in. If you are talking to an executive recruiter, it's the same thing. They are taking notes. Believe me, that stuff goes in. So, And they might say, I talked to so-and-so. I talked to Word Dog Toronto. That person had good skills here, not interested in that, didn't want to travel, you know, wasn't very helpful, asked for referrals, didn't give any, and all that stuff's in there. Believe me, they don't forget. So if you, just because they were annoying doesn't mean you need to be annoying. So, so just think about that. And then, and then should you go back to them? You could always reach back to them. They might or might not call you back. And if they do, then you go, right? And then you try to recover. All right, wait, we're coming up on noon, and I have a hard stop here shortly. I want to give you a breakdown of what's coming. Resume writing, workshop session one, Tuesday. It's really good. It's the psychology behind resume writing. It's exactly how recruiters look at your resume. It's what they're looking for, where they're looking for, what goes in the resume, and that kind of stuff. It's an hour and five minutes, plus we're going to be doing a Q&A, so it's a pretty healthy couple of hours. Then on third, then and and the resume writing workshop is seventy nine dollars until Tuesday night, midnight my time. The next day, the, on Wednesday, the resume writing workshop is one hundred nineteen dollars. The following day, Thursday, I'm coming back. I'm here for live office hours. We're focusing on the resume, resume Q and A, all things resume. The resume's half price. It'll be one hundred forty nine dollars till Thursday night. Then the following week, live office hours, regular slot, regular show time. The following week, October 31st to November 4th is the job search challenge all new for 2022 and 2023. I think you're going to like it. And then right after the job search challenge, that following Tuesday, we go into the interview intervention training program rebuild Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday. Then you go into Thanksgiving, all dialed up. 
So you got your resume in order, you know how to job search, and you got, inter well, if you pay for the interview stuff and the, and the boot camp, you'll have all that as well. So if you have any questions, support at milewalk.com. If you want to sync your calendar up, milewalkacademy.com, there's a calendar that you can sync to, to your um to your, you know, kind of your 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 device of preference, your Apple iCal or I don't know, Outlook or Gmail or whatever or whatever you have. And um, well, I got I got a lot of good stuff on the podcast coming. I'm on TikTok now. You know, that's kind of fun. <laughs> it's a pretty fun platform. Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. I'm everywhere. Where every I then LinkedIn newsletter, your email inbox. Where do you want to see me, people? I'm there for you. All right. Y'all be good. If I didn't get to your questions, you can always drop them in the in the comments underneath this video because YouTube records it. It lives in YouTube land forever un, under Andy's under Andy's YouTube channel. And uh, lots of luck. Everybody have a great weekend. And tomorrow, I'll be seeing all my leaders for collaboration. 11 o'clock tomorrow uh, in our Zoom room. It's going to be fun. All right, y'all be good. Love y'all. See you soon.